Andrew Lockhead, fish out of the Isle of Whitthorn, fish for over 30 years out of here. Uh, I do lobster and crab fishing, it's a 12 metre catamaran, it was built down in Canva Island, got it purpose built for the job 10 years ago. Seascope is a marine fisheries research company. A lot of the work we do has been uh, in conjunction with the University of St Andrews, most recently with the CIFID project. This is the first prototype of the conveyor system we've developed. An animal just gets placed on one end of the conveyor, it runs through, a, a laser scans it as it passes through the conveyor. It, it then collects the data from the laser line and reconstructs a 3D image of that particular animal. This then allows us to determine sex and size, etc. It's letting you know actually what's on the seabed, how many males compared to females there is. Well, I, I know fishing myself over the years, at different times of year there's, there's more males and other times of the year there's more females. So. The sea, it changes all the time. There's a lot of processing goes on in the scanner itself and, and it will generate just a, quite a small string of data, being species, sex and size. Uh, that's then sent to our transmitting box which is located up on top of the wheelhouse and whenever the vessel has a decent phone signal, that data is transmitted to a, uh, a cloud server. It's instantaneous. The system can, can collect data on individual animals faster than I can feed them into the conveyor. It's, it's very quick. Uh, for crabs, to determine sex, the scanner is looking at the height of the carapace um, in relation to the width of the carapace. Females have a much higher domed carapace compared to males where it's a lot flatter. Um, with lobsters, the shape of the tail sections is very different between male and females. It's a lot broader on the females to allow them to carry eggs. So again, the scanner is picking up those differences. These sort of scanners are available and in use in factory and processing environments generally. I don't think they've been applied to live animals before. Uh, it has no effect on the animals. It's a class 3 laser which is deemed eye safe for humans. Uh, we haven't seen, seen anything that would indicate it's causing issues with the shellfish. Without fishermen, more or less, this project w wouldn't have got off the ground. It's, uh, their input and feedback is, is crucial, especially when trying to develop technology that will work within their working environment on a fishing boat. As part of this project we've worked on a range of vessels down to probably six to seven metres length up to approximately 12. But that was sort of the target fleet we were looking for. This is a very spacious boat. Some of the smaller boats can be quite compact. Obviously we, we would target boats that, that had the space to facilitate it in the first instance. It certainly wouldn't be required on every boat. Uh, the amount of data a, an individual unit could collect is uh, enormous. So I think spreading them around the country geographically, um, you know, you could maybe get away with 10 or 15 doing a lot of data collection. They'll all also be portable, so they could be switched between vessels from time to time. It's not a lot of effort, but from a fisherman's point of view, if they're using this device, it is a change in, in how they've operated. So it's just a matter of adapting to that change. Well, it, it's for conservation as well, I suppose. If uh, it's shown the government what, what we're up to, where we are, what we're doing, and it's like this, things that we're doing with the cameras and all, it's shown what the catches are and how much small stuff's on the ground and going back over the side, that's a, that's a good thing to see. We, we developed it initially as a piece of kit to collect data on board fishing vessels. As we've gone along though, it's become apparent that it would be hugely useful on land, either in shellfish processing plants or for organisations such as Marine Scotland Science who collect um, 
data from landings of shellfish, etc. It'll just uh, speed up the process immensely. Um, obviously, and probably the biggest challenge is the environment that we we are asking these machines to work in. It's um, it's often cold, wet. Um, so yeah, we need to make sure that these these builds are robust enough to withstand the rigors of day-to-day -day life on a fishing vessel. In a, in a finished version, we would like to see it all in either marine grade aluminium or stainless steel. But in terms of a prototype, this is working quite well now and we hope to develop it further.